now we're gonna play Curse. This game I think you play as a paranormal investigator, so you're investigating this haunted house and crazy shit happens, so... We're going easy mode. I'm too pussy for hard mode right now. I'm playing this perfectly at midnight on a nice cold night. It's about to be fall, which is the Halloween time any day now. I'm very excited to get into all the Halloween games that are going to be coming out soon. So exciting. Okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to do something right now. Oh boy. They really want you to know that you're a ghost hunter right now. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? Um, yeah. I I'm just calling to check in on your first night at Frankie's Fat Bear Pizza. Uh, you're the new security guard, right? Hello? Took me a second to realize what they're referencing there. I was just so concerned with how hilarious that voice sounded. But if you didn't catch it, that was a Five Nights at Freddy's reference. Oh, open the- okay, gotcha. Now I can do stuff. How do I open this though? Oh, I have to click on the words. Alright. Property investigation report, and that's the house I'm going to. Subject, the Atherton Manor of Ohio. Blood Manor. That doesn't sound good. Year built, 1836. Number of rooms, a lot. Property owner, unknown. Property history. Built in 1836, the Atherton Manor was home to nearly seven generations of Athertons. The manor was built by enigmatic Edgar Atherton. Edgar lived in the manor with his wife, Eve, and two children. The property was home to lavish parties and was a meeting place for several dignitaries from around the world. In 1925, an investigation was launched to find the whereabouts of several missing people, rumored to have recently stayed within the manor. The missing people or their remains were not found, but evidence of sophisticated means of foul play were. Edgar Atherton was never charged with any offense. Through the years, the house has had more than its share of legends, myths, and whispers. Some of them true, some not, but one thing is certain, people are afraid of that house. Mission parameters. The property is to be thoroughly investigated. All rooms, areas, and sub-areas are to be explored and reported on. An official debriefing will occur upon your return to the corporate office. Any evidence of paranormal activity is to be logged and reported on upon your return to the corporate office. And all- wait, did I already read that? Oh no, it's just- okay. Any and all entity contact is to be carefully conducted. If contact with hostile entities occurs, you are authorized to use your WPI flashlight on said entities. So, I fight them off with my flashlight, is that what they're saying? If you or your team decides that a cleansing is warranted, proceed via normal entity removal protocols. If contact with you or your team is interrupted or lost for a period of longer than 72 hours, a formal search and rescue operation will be put into effect. Surprise, they would wait that long, 72 hours before you're even curious about where the fuck your partner went? Wow. So this property clearly doesn't have a great history. So far I like it though. It gave me a pretty good backstory on this house because usually in the games I've been playing you just are left someplace and you don't know why it's spooky or anything like that. But this already is telling you, yes this place is definitely haunted, you're not crazy, and this is why. I wish there was some voice acting in this though, besides that awful one during the phone call. Okay, so I have a backpack too, so I'll probably be collecting items. Banishment regents. Alright. One battery? Do they expect that to last the whole night? Is that what the plan is right now? Because I don't think they're implying that I'd find more batteries there. Okay, I'm ready to get into this. This has been like a mini tutorial telling me what I'm gonna need to do. And I just want to get inside the house. 
Okay, one thing you guys should know about this game, which is a bit different from what I usually play, is that you can't really free walk. You can only click someplace and you'll walk there. Oh, I can't see behind me and see the driver over driving away. Okay, so I see my flashlight battery in one corner. Okay, so like I said, I'm not moving right now. You just click someplace and your character just goes there. So I can't like run around and go to any little corner that I'd like to. It's all set points, but I think that's kind of interesting and we'll see how that goes. In my backpack. How do I get to my backpack? Ah. So I don't even have to worry about it. It'll just get the key for me pretty much. Okay, yeah, I assumed it was probably going to be the B key. Why do they have a door to get to the front door? That's really dumb. It's okay. Right click or use F to- okay. I don't want to even try that right now, but just in case. Let me just- just so I know that it works and everything's good. Because since they said that I only have one battery and I don't know if there's going to be batteries around for me to collect like in the average game, I'm just going to be safe just in case that's all I have. Because it seems like the flashlight is the only way to get rid of spirits that might come at me that are dicks, so... Okay. So far I like the look of this place. Alright, of course, cell phone's gone, so we're already alone. At least my flashlight's fine. So since I can't really move myself, how can I really examine things in the distance is what I'm wondering. Hopefully my eye range is far enough for that. Yeah, that's true. Who lit all these lamps if this place is supposed to be empty? Okay, let's see what we can look at here. There's a clock there, but nothing's happening when I click on it. Oh, shit. It looks like it's a floating candle just floating back and forth up there. I don't really feel like going up there. I can't turn around though. I didn't mean to come up here. I wanted to explore the first area some more. I'm sure I can eventually go back down. Oh. So they're getting right to it. There's no brakes on this train right now. Already a ghost. Full apparition, not even a hint of like books falling off a shelf and slightly spooking me. They just want me to know from the get-go that this place fucking sucks. Okay, I don't want to explore that right now. I'm trying to get downstairs, but you can't turn around in this game all the way, so I don't really know what to do about that. I can't walk to these doors, I just thought- oh fuck, don't turn that on. I guess I have no choice but to go forward. Alright. Okay, good. It turned me around. Awesome. That's very wishful thinking right now. Pretty sure that door is just gonna shut right in my face. Yep. It's too late, dude. <laughs> Alright, that one got me. The first one didn't, but that one did. <sighs> So that was the same one? It looked like it was a completely separate ghost, I have to say. The first one was completely white and that one had a bunch of dark in it. Oh, now there's whispering. Awesome. Yeah, welcome to this place. Awesome. I don't know what that little cat mask in the corner was. Approach the desk. Okay, there you go. Now I can explore these other areas. They just wanted to scare the fuck out of me first.
And no music is playing. I don't know why he's wondering. He obviously knows that there's already something here. He saw it twice. Clay record. Um, what part do I click? Oh, right, I keep forgetting you have to click on the actual text. Welcome to Atherton Manor. I'm delighted you decided to come. I do hope you find your stay here enlightening. Mm -hmm. The answers that you see are here, I assure you. I must caution you, though. The spectacles beholding in this manor house are certainly not for the timid. As for your intention is to purge this home of its unique energies, I will inform you that my manor has stood with its occupants intact for nearly a century. I want to turn it off, but I better listen. Protects itself. Now, off you go. You have much to explore and many new friends to meet. So Edgar Atherton is someone who has been dead for a while. And he knows I was here, and knows why I came here. So that's something I wish to figure out, how he knew that. Is he still alive? Is it just his ghost self being a dick like all the other people here? I don't know. Okay, investigation at Blood Manor. A team of paranormal investigators from the wall- maybe this- let me click on this real quick just in case this is- yeah, it reads it down here. Oh, it's not reading the full fucking thing. Oh, that's okay, you guys can see it on the screen, it's right there. I usually read out like every note and stuff that I come across, but since this game's working a little bit differently than what I'm used to, I don't think I will for this game. I don't know why he's wondering what happened to that team. He's already seen what's going on here. Hey, maybe I'll find them. She's pretty cute. I would like to find her. She will find you. Hmm. Oh yeah, she already did a couple times. That's not really as threatening as if, you know, I hadn't known about it, but cool. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't open that cabinet since it just tossed me back over here. Can I open that door? I could. Okay, so that's the library. And back there, I'm not really sure what's back there. Approach the planter. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that in a second. What's this way? A dining hall. Hmm, I think I'll go to the dining hall first, but before I do that, I do want to check out the planter and the clock. Oh, so there's a door back here, actually. Because I knew I saw a door on the other side as well, but it didn't give me an option to go through it. A key, of course. What else would be in here? Oh, okay, perfect, because I was about to go to the dining room. Yeah, because there's that door on the other side too, but it's not giving me the option to go through this door right now, it seems. So I guess I'll just ignore these doors for now, the ones in the back of the staircase. They'll probably eventually open up. Investigate. 3.15, of course. The spookiest time. Oh. Well, yeah, obviously this clock's old as fuck, dude. Obviously it's not gonna be super accurate. But usually, though, I do play my games at 3.15am most of the time. Tonight I'm playing at around 12.30 to 1, but... I like the spookiest time of 3-something. Uh, yeah, I said I was gonna go to the dining room, so that's what I'll do. I'm going to the dining room first because I find that whenever I explore a dining room in a horror game, it's usually the least important room out of all the rooms. 
What happened? Oh, right, I have to use it on the actual door itself. So I like to go in order of, like, what I think is the least important first before I go to the most important and obvious place, like going back upstairs or usually I also find that the library is the most important room so I'd rather wait to do that one last and have any little thing I might need in this room before I go to the library how does he know though he doesn't have anything out to test that okay so I can't interact with anything else except for going straight to this taking me a little bit of time to get used to this game but so far I'm actually starting to like it a lot. And the atmosphere is really great. But yeah what I'm curious about is all these symbols on the ceiling that look kind of shady. Alright so no we're not turning on the flashlight. I keep getting tempted to turn it on but I better not. Not that I need light but I'm just used to having a flashlight in a spooky house. Okay so let's explore the cupboard. Uh, why can't I open the top one? That's weird. And only open the middle one. Alright, we got a note. So far so good, that's right. But I can't read it. Alright, there we go. So, okay. To whoever finds this letter, I am writing this out of necessity on behalf of the Wallace Paranormal Investigation Team in hopes of documenting our investigation of Atherton Manor. Less than an hour into our study and we have already hit a stumbling block. Wait, let me just click this real quick. I was hoping it was from her. I didn't even notice her name at the bottom. The cute chick from the newspaper. Wait, let me finish reading this. I was hoping that clicking the read note option would actually have him read the note but it never does all right less than an hour into our study and we have yeah 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 all power cut out upon entering the manor none of our equipment is functioning michael believes it's some sort of electromagnetic field coming from the cellar below us but my intuition tells me otherwise everything inside this house is completely dead even the flames wait does that say flames why wouldn't the flames be dead? On the candles seem choked by the madness of this place. Beyond all explanation, the only working piece of equipment is the old phonograph in the front vestibule. The message contained on the record is disturbing to say the least and has John questioning its historical authenticity. The longer we spend inside the manor, the more it seems to exercise its will against us. Michael had a terrible scare while using the bathroom and made a mad dash for the front door. It was then that we realized just how dire our situation truly was. All doors and windows of the manor are sealed, locked as if by some otherworldly force for all intents and purposes. We may be trapped here. Michael and John cling desperately to logic to explain our experiences, but as my grandmother explained when I first discovered my gift, there are things that are beyond logic and reason. I believe this manor is maligned proof of that. I would continue to write more, but the echoes from the creaks and groans of the old manor are playing tricks on me. I swear on my soul that I can hear whispers from inside the kitchen. Tasha Holm, lead psychic. So where's the kitchen then? The kitchen should be near the dining hall, right? I hope I find more notes from her. That also help explain what happened to them. Alright, so there's really not that much to explore. Oh wait, I can't go to that cupboard. I could have swore I tried going to that cupboard earlier and I couldn't. Oh well. Oh, I can open all the drawers this time. Another note. To whoever finds this letter, I fear we've made a grave error in coming here. The manor is cold as death. Fire provides no warmth, and the deranged cacophony of noises have prevented us from even a moment's rest. Chris discovered an old spirit board in the parlor. Really? Really? This is what you guys decided to do? And insist that we conduct a seance tonight to invoke the spirits inhabiting this dreadful place. I am desperately opposed to participating based on my grandmother's accounts regarding the dangers of invocation. I've done enough everything I can to change his mind, but he's become obsessed with the notion of cleansing the manor of its maligned energies. He urges me to try to reach out and make contact with them, but I refuse. I cannot muster the courage to tell the others what I already know. This house speaks to me, and its intentions are clear. They wish us nothing but harm. My only minor consolation is that they seem to lack the power to do so. For now, Tasha Holm, lead psychic. Read. 
This place was really getting to her. Poor girl needed to hone her ability to filter out psychic noises. Yeah, it's pretty doubtful. I can't explore- for some reason I don't know why it's not letting me explore these big ones. Oh, I'm right here. I guess I can't explore it. Haha, <laughs> great. Nice china, but it's worth a fortune. That's right, nothing exciting here. Oh, what is it? Another note? Wow, three notes right together? That's weird. To whoever finds this letter, I've resigned myself to spend the afternoon with John and Michael in the library. Sitting through the volumes of books within, I pray there are answers here within the many lexicons of supernatural lore. The manor covets many secrets, but I have managed to uncover one. I have set one particular book aside, which I found to be of use. It speaks of immortality via some sort of rune magic. The hour of the seance is growing near, and I have returned to the dining room to prepare myself. The sinister events of the past two days have cast a dark shadow on my mind. The madness of this place has begun to crescendo into a wild storm, and I am uncertain if I can weather it any longer. I swear I could feel a cold, foreboding presence following me down the hallway that leads to the kitchen, but every step I took it grew closer, reaching out for me, cold, dead hands grabbing for the nape of my neck. I stood in the kitchen, frozen in place, raising my lantern to every corner of the room, but I was alone. Somewhere in the darkness I could hear a woman's voice. Someone must pay. Someone will pay. It is as if a man or yearns for the seance to commence so it can begin its sinister handiwork. I pray that I am wrong, but this presence is so full of rage like nothing I've ever felt before. Tasha Holm. So I'm assuming... Since that guy had that message for me in the beginning, even though he obviously should be dead, um, that he's been doing shit to gain immortal- uh, that's not good. That looks like the cute chick, though. Yeah, it's her. I don't want to see who that is. That wasn't very helpful, Tasha. I appreciate you showing up, though. So now I know for sure she's dead. I was still holding out some slight hope. Maybe, you know, somehow they were just tied up in a basement for all this time. Eh. They were not. So as I was saying, I would imagine that the Edgar guy was doing some sort of rituals with, by killing people to gain immortality, which is how he knew I was coming and why he would still be alive to record that. But this she person keeps getting mentioned and Edgar is not a she, so seems like there's a bit more to it than just that. If it's unlocked, let me open it. Excellent. God help whoever finds this letter. The seance was a nightmare. Christopher is dead and his ignorance may prove to be our undoing. My premonitions on the manor were correct. Something evil dwells with inside these walls and her name is Mary something. Is that Chancer? Not sure if that's an N. Might be Chaucer. We'll go with Chaucer. At first her responses seemed harmless and formative even, until the same feeling of dread I felt in the kitchen crashed over me again, like a wave of ice water. It was when Christopher probed into Mary's death that the manor grew angry. I begged him not to mention the foul item we found in the parlor fireplace, but he refused to listen. He pressed on his voice a crescendo of accusations. The snapping sound of his neck as he flew from the table was like a cigarette burn. I knew as his body slumped against the wall that he was dead. The group scattered, and I fled running helplessly in the darkness, hoping to find my way back to the dining room. Mary's voice was whispering in the darkness, assuring me there is no escape. The kitchen floor is like ice. I can hear it coming in the distance. Something waits outside the door, hovering in the darkness. The whispers begin again. I was pretty once, like you. Pretty dead things we shall be. The doorknob is turning. And then she died. Yeah. So why is Mary so angry? Oh shit, this one opened by itself. That door just unlocked and opened by itself. Yeah, that's what I said. He's on top of it. We're both on top of saying the same thing. To where finds this- okay. Hmm. Uh...
Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> that's the same symbol that's all over the ceiling. I'm a little nervous right now. I'm really nervous. Like, I'm, I'm scared now, I have to admit. It's not giving me the option, though, to go somewhere else. Run or the space bar, but only when the lights go out. What? I can only run when the lights go out? What the fuck is this telling me right now? Oh, god damn it. I'd rather just stay in the spot instead of- No, 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 no. No, she's there, she's there. Please go away. Please die. Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much right now. So I have to worry about that? I really hate this now. Oh, oh boy, that sucks. And that's what I need the flashlight for. Fuck, where is there a phone ringing right now? Is that a phone? Oh yeah, that is a phone. Ha ha ha, that's wishful thinking, dude. Who? Sounds like Tasha talking to me. Yeah, I need all the help I can get, dude. I think probably I should use my flashlight less. Like, obviously I only used the flashlight when it got dark, but I mean... I don't know when this game saves, by the way, but anyways, as I was saying, I could probably have waited a little bit longer before using the flashlight, because since this one battery has to last me the whole night, as not ideal as that is, I know she probably won't show up within the first, like, three seconds of the lights going out, so I could probably hold off on it for a little bit before turning it on. Okay, so we're about to go into the kitchen. Shit! Why? Okay, it's fine. It's a bit bloody, but you know, it's all good. Okay, good. That wasn't really there. So what did she do to Tasha? Fucked her up, of course. Uh, there's not really anything to explore in here, which is kind of weird. Um... Hmm. I guess we'll exit the kitchen. Investigate the kitchen exit door. Kitchen exit door is unlocked. What an investigation. Okay, enter the cellar access room. Ooh, these noises need to stop. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so I think I'm gonna actually- s oh shit, I hear like footsteps. Anyways, I think I'm gonna enter tonight. Thank you for watching. I'll have more very soon. And yeah.